very good morning students today let's learn about principles of therapeutics penicillins and cephalosporins uh, i am dr sindhu first year postgraduate department of pharmacology so what do you all know about therapeutics therapeutics is nothing but you are incorporating the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics with the biochemical aspects of disease in order to treat the disease or prevent the disease diagnosing the disease or altering the normal functions okay so uh, pharmacotherapeutics is nothing but you are using the drug for either preventing the disease treating treating the disease diagnosing the disease or altering the normal functions altering normal functions is nothing but taking uh, birth control pills that is for example okay so next pharmacotherapeutic steps that first define the patient's problem and indication of treatment the therapeutic objective is that online specific to the patient's needs then after seeing uh, everything and outlining the patient in a particular thing then we give choose to give the treatment or based on what the what the person has problem okay that is pharmacotherapeutics and uh, information about the drug instructions for use and any precautions are provided by patient and caregivers once the treatment begins ongoing assessment is carried out to determine if the treatment should be continued modified or stopped when you will continue the treatment when the person is showing better improvement you will continue the treatment when you will modify the treatment if a person is not showing much progress or there is some any other infections along with one of the infection or one of the disease then we modify the treatment when do we stop the treatment when the person shows any adverse reactions for the given medications or the disease has been completely cured then we stop the medication okay so coming to the different types of pharmacotherapeutics uh, what are the different types of pharmacotherapeutics here we have is acute therapy acute therapy which is needed to sustain life or treat patient disease in critically ill patients in uh, intensive drug treatment is indicated and it may involve multiple drugs or ongoing assessment it must begin immediately for patient improvement or recovery when this acute therapy is given when patient is critically ill and he needs a intensive drug treatment uh, like for an example let's take a person comes with a heart attack we all know what is heart attack right myocardial infarction when a person comes with that uh, you have to immediately treat him start treating him yes yes so um, that is acute therapy what is chronic therapy chronic therapy is indicated in chronic illnesses uh, chronic illnesses like uh, diabetes hypertension in such cases we give chronic therapy so it is indicated in chronic illnesses as it prevents condition from worsening or it controls symptoms okay you are not expected to cure the disease completely in chronic therapy uh, like uh, if a person gets diabetes is diagnosed with diabetes then he should keep taking the uh, diabetic medicines forever that's it you can't cure the diabetes uh, you can't cure the diabetes what you do is you only control and you don't make, uh, you make sure that that is not progressing further that is uh, in chronic therapy you are giving only the cure you are not uh, sorry you are not giving the cure you are giving only you are only controlling the disease condition like uh, let's take for an example here beta blockers for heart disease as the person would need this for many years or rest of their lives at that time you are giving chronic therapy one of them in chronic therapy is maintenance therapy in maintenance therapy it replaces the drugs such as methadone for heroin addict 
okay maintenance therapy means uh, you are, you want to remove that drug completely but in if you remove it completely uh, the person may show some adverse effects in such conditions you give another drug and slowly uh, take reduce the dose of the present drug that is maintenance therapy and long term therapy may not be for illness related conditions long term therapy it like for some conditions it is not only for illness conditions uh, it is also useful in some normal uh, body functions also like uh, oral contraceptives which are giving as birth control few people use it very chronically though they does not have any illness that is chronic therapy next supplementary or replacement therapy means uh, the body with supplies the um, this replacement therapy supplies the body with a substance to maintain normal function an example of critical care is insulin therapy for type 1 diabetic patient hormone replacement therapy can be used for months or years to relieve menopause symptoms vitamins and minerals are indicated for deficiencies such as iron for iron deficiency anemia okay uh, next coming to palliative therapy palliative therapy is for comfort rather than cure it is often used in late stages of disease such as cancer it provides relief of symptoms like pain or stress example analgesics antiemetics anti anxiety and stool softness okay uh, coming to supportive therapy uh, this supportive therapy is to maintain the integrity of body functions while the patient is recovering from illness or any trauma Uh, for an example, let's take blood transfusion for blood loss. Next, prophylactic treatment. Prophylactic treatment means you're uh, giving it to prevent the illness or disease. Okay, that is administered to prevent illness or other undesirable outcomes during planned events. Example, uh, giving antibiotic before surgery to prevent infection or rabies shot after a uh, dog bite. Okay. next we have empiric therapy which involves the beginning treatment based purely on patient symptoms as diagnosis has not yet been confirmed uh, for an example clostridium difficile before uh, treatment of clostridium difficile before uh, we get the culture report okay next what nurses have to re- remember here is patient centered care is must what is patient centered care it is respect for patient's values preferences and expressed needs in regard to coordination and integration of care information communication physical comfort and emotional support these all are to be provided by nursing professional okay he next coming to nursing process under pharmacotherapy that is treatment of disease through the use of drugs which are safe appropriate and economical therefore medications should be used at the lowest dose and for the shortest duration that is likely to achieve the desired outcome what are the fine nursing processes include they are assessment diagnosis planning implementation and evaluation what is assessment gathering the information about health current medic medications and lifestyle diagnosis facilitates the development of an individualized care plan to set goals expected outcomes and interventions next coming to planning planning means development of nursing interventions used to assess the patient in meeting goals implementation provide education drug administration or interventions to assess patient in acclimatization established goal and next evaluation evaluation you are determining whether the goals and teaching objectives are being met and revised as needed like a person is coming to you you are assessing what his health problem is once a doctor writes and gives the prescription you will also ask them what happened and everything else you keep assessing then the diagnosis okay after the diagnosis uh, you will be planning uh, i should be giving this medicine first then this medicine then that medicine after everything over implementing what he, you are implementing you are giving the proper uh, treatment and if there are any uh, like uh, for insulin 
a person will be taking insulin even after going to home and getting discharged. So you are just uh, making the uh, you are teaching them how to take the personal medicines. Okay, uh, that is one of the thing in implementation, and you are giving the treatment evaluation. You are uh, evaluating whether the what you have uh, given to the patient is it working or not. You are evaluating, and you will be uh, informing to the doctor. So here, the drug effectiveness should be measured according to the expected outcome uh, let's take for an example if we are giving an antibiotic what the expected outcome should be you may have to observe uh, observation that is uh, is there any reduction of inflammation then patient should be reporting less pain and we should be assessing is there any there is any decrease of white blood cell counts and not okay why decrease of white blood cell because when there is an infection the white blood cells are increased so when you're giving antibiotics and once the infections come down, the white blood cell count also comes down, okay? I hope uh, you people are clear about the pharmacotherapy thing. Uh, let, let's continue with antimicrobials now. So what do we have in antimicrobials? What are antimicrobials? Antimicrobials are nothing, uh, antimicrobial agents are nothing but they are the broad group which contain all natural semi-synthetic and synthetic agents which inhibit or kill the microorganisms. They are the antimicrobial agents and uh, what Paul Ehrlich considered is con was considered as a father of chemotherapy. He was considered as father of chemotherapy because he, was, he first identified chemotherapy. Um, he first identified chemotherapy for syphilis. He identified the treatment and coined the term chemotherapy. And then the term antibiotic was coined by Waxman. What are antibiotics? Antibiotics are nothing but they are the substances which are obtained from one microorganism and they are proved to be fatal for another microorganism in dilute solution, that is at lower concentrations. Only at lower concentration, we are considering a drug as uh, like the so it antibiotic, we are considering it antibiotics. Uh, like when used, uh, for an example, we are using alcohol and hydrogen peroxide to kill the microorganisms, but they are used at higher concentration. That is why they are not called as antibiotics. Okay, you just have to remember this part. After that, let's go for classification of antimicrobials. How antimicrobials are acting uh, on a bacteria or microbe. So, uh, under that, we have uh, something which inhibits cell wall synthesis. So, cell wall synthesis is inhibited by penicillins. Cephalosporins, carbapenes, monobactam, vancomycin. Next, we have drugs which inhibit the protein synthesis. They are chloramphenicone, tetracyclines, macrolides, clindamycin, streptogramins, oxazolidones, and aminoglycosides. Uh, after that, we have the and agents which alter nucleic acid metabolism. They are rifamycins and phenamines which inhibit the folate metabolism, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, miscellaneous, metronidazole, dactomycin. Okay, uh, here in my class, we will learn about penicillins and cephalosporins. The other penicillins and cephalosporins, uh, the other uh, antimicrobial agents or antibiotics will be dealt later. Okay, so you just have to remember this diagram, which makes it easy for you. Okay, this is a structure of uh, bacteria or, okay, uh, uh, RNA synthesis inhibitors, for an example, rifampicin. Okay, they are inhibiting the formation of RNA. Then we have to remember the protein synthesis inhibitors. They are aminoglycosides, ketolides, macrolides, streptogramins, and tetracyclines. Next, we have to remember is 
the proteins which are converting into the essential metabolites and the metabolites there we have example for sulfonamides and then the replication process which is to be inhibited that is dna synthesis inhibitors chloroquinolones next we have cell wall synthesis inhibitors in cell wall synthesis inhibitors we have carboxyl cephalosporins isoniazide penicillin and vancomycin okay you just remember this diagram and remember this classification of antimicrobials okay so next coming to penicillin what are penicillin penicillin are one of the antimicrobials which kill bacteria by disrupting their cell walls many bacterial cell walls contain substances called penicillin binding protein that serve as a receptor for penicillin okay upon binding penicillin once the penicillin binds to the cell wall it allows water to enter into the uh, bacteria thus killing the organism okay so what happened gram positive bacteria are most commonly affected by penicillin including streptococci and staphylococci penicillin are indicated for the treatment of pneumonia meningitis skin bone joint infection stomach infection blood valve infection gas gangrene tetanus anthrax sickle cell anemia in infants so what is the mechanism of action i just told you what happens it is uh, it disrupts the cell wall once the cell wall is disrupted the whole water is ent entered into the cell and it results in death of the organism so the portion of chemical structure of penicillin that is responsible for antimicrobial activity is called the beta lactam ring okay some bacteria secrete an enzyme called beta lactamase or penicillin which split the beta lactam ring let's see the beta lact lactam ring and the inclusion so uh, this is a structure of penicillin and this is the beta lactam ring okay this is the bacteria once that uh, beta lactam resistant bacteria what happens uh, they break the beta lactam ring and antibiotic activity is lost how means how the resistance of penicillin is acquired in bacteria if the beta lactam ring is broken then the beta lactam ring it becomes resistant the the bacteria becomes resistant and the drug will not work anymore okay next coming to classification of penicillins uh, in penicillins we have natural penicillin semi synthetic penicillin okay so natural penicillins they are narrow spectrum beta lactamase susceptible penicillin in parenteral adm administration parenteral administration means we are not giving it orally until the orally it is called as parenteral like iv iv so we are giving benzyl penicillin that is penicillin g next oral administration we are giving phenoxy methyl penicillin penicillin v remember penicillin g is parenteral penicillin v is oral next coming to semi synthetic penicillins in semi synthetic penicillins we have very narrow spectrum broad spectrum beta uh, drugs beta lactamase inhibitor combined drugs of penicillin and beta lactamase inhibitors okay so in narrow spectrum beta lactam resistant penicillins we have oxacillin dicloxacillin and fluoxacillin next we have broad spectrum in broad spectrum there are beta lactam is susceptible penicillin we have amino penicillin in that we have amipenicillin and amoxicillin next we have uh, mesicillin and then carboxy penicillins uh, uridio penicillins carboxy penicillins we have carboxylin and ticarcicillin uh, and uridio penicillin we have uh, azbacicillin mesbacicillin piperacillin piperacillin uh, what are the other beta lactam drugs we have they are monobactam and carbapenes beta lactam is in beta sac sulfobactam tazobactam sodium and potassium clavulinate combined drugs of penicillin and beta lactamase inhibitors is uh, amoxiclar amoxicillin and potassium clavulinate 
uh, unacinetus, ampicillin, and sulfactam. These are the drugs which are come under the penicillins. So what are the therapeutic uses of penicillin? I have discussed them just now. Um, pneumococcal infections. What are the pneumococcal infections you see? Like pneumonia. Um, pneumococcal infections like uh, pneumonia and meningitis that uh, they are caused by streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay, and next to uh, uh, other st uh, streptococcal infections are uh, like uh, erysipelas, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, um, bacteremia, rheumatic fever. Next, uh, they, they are useful in treating syphilis. They are useful in endocarditis, which is caused due to streptococcus viridens or picalis. And the anaerobic uh, streptococci, which cause septicemia, infection of colon, rectum, vagina, are also um, the uh, and penicillins are also useful against these kind of infections. Next, we have meningococcal infections uh, like uh, meningitis. Uh, next, we have gas gangrene, rat bite fever, and erysipeloids. These are some of the therapeutic uses of the penicillins. Next, coming to adverse reactions. What are the most common adverse reactions? There are so many uh, adverse, uh, adverse reactions. One is a hypersensitivity reaction, which, uh, which is anaphylactic reaction of type 1 hypersensitivity. This is the most rare uh, adverse reaction. But once, it, uh, once this adverse reaction comes, it is a fatal and if it is not managed properly the person may die so the sensitivity test is compulsory before giving penicillin okay uh, the treatment for this hypersensitivity reaction is um, adrenaline antihistamines and corticosteroids what are the other uh, adverse react local hypersensitivity reactions is skin rash fever dermatitis urticaria they may occur one thing you have to remember here is jarish hexmus reaction. What is this jarish hexmus reaction? This occurs after several hours when the first dose of penicillin is given in case of syphilis, mainly secondary syphilis, uh, due to spirochete antigen, that is due to mass killing and condition generally subsides in 48 hours and does not occur after second or third dose. This jarry sexual reaction, it occurs after giving the first dose of the syphilis. First dose of penicillin for syphilis. Okay, what happens? Uh, why this reaction occurs? It, uh, it occurs due to mass killing of this pyrochid antigen. Okay, and but does the, the same reaction does not occur when giving the second, after giving the second or third dose. Okay. Uh, thus, there is no need to uh, once, uh, like what do you do if you see any adverse reaction or any this hypersensitivity kind of uh, reaction, you discontinue the drug. But in this jarish hexmer reaction, you need not discontinue the drug because it uh, reduces slowly and the treatment for this we will be aspirin and sedatives. Next, local irritation. Local irritation means <clears throat> at the uh, site of injection, there may be pain or thrombophlebitis. Next, bleeding. Very high dose of uh, penicillin G may cause bleeding due to antiplatelet action. Next, we have neurotoxicity. These are the few adverse effects of penicillins. And I hope you all understood penicillins. And coming back to, coming to cephalosporins. Okay, so what are cephalosporins? Cephalosporins are one of the category of beta lactamase. Okay, they are similar to the penicillins. The primary therapeutic use of cephalosporins is they are used for gram negative infections and for patients who cannot tolerate the less expensive penicillins. Like the penicillins, many cephalosporins contain a beta lactam ring that is responsible for their antimicrobial activity. The cephalosporins are bactericidal 
and act by attaching to penicillin binding proteins to inhibit the bacterial cell wall. In the same way, how the penicillin act, the same mechanism of action is there for the cephalosporins also. So this is the classification of cephalosporins. I have, uh, we have uh, first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, and fifth generation cephalosporins. Again, in first generations, the cephalosporins which are given parenterally are cephalothin, cephaloridin, and cephazolin. Oral, uh, orally given are cephalexin, cephadroxyl, and oral and parenteral are cephadrin. Second generation parental drug are cefamycin C, cefoxetin, cefotitan, cefmetazone, and cefroxin. Orally, we have cefaclor and ceprozil. Third generation, it is cefotaxin, uh, ceftazidine, ceftriaxone. Orally, we have cefixin, ceftinib, and ceftigmitone. Fourth generation parental, cefepim, and cefpyrone. Fifth generation, it is cef Ceftobiprol. So, what are the first generation cephalosporins? They are most effective drugs in uh, gram positive organisms, include staphylococci and streptococci. There are some uh, drugs, uh, sometimes they are drug of choices for these organisms. So, first generation cephalosporins come as a drug of choice for few gram positive organisms. So, bacteria that produce beta lactamase will usually be resistant to these drugs. Next, second generation cephalosporins are more potent and more resistant to beta lactamase and exhibit a broader spectrum against gram negative organisms than the first generation drugs. The second generation agents have largely been replaced by third generation cephalosporins. The third generation cephalosporins exhibit an even broader spectrum against gram negative bacteria than the second generation drugs. The, uh, the third generation, <clears throat> the third generation drugs, their long, duration of action is longer and they are resistant to beta lactamase. These cephalosporins are uh, sometimes drug of choice for Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Miseria, Salmonella, Proteus, and H. influenza infections. Fourth and fifth generation cephalosporins are effective against the organisms that have developed resistance to the earlier cephalosporins. Like um, in fourth generation agents, <coughs> excuse me, fourth generation agents are capable of entering the cerebrospinal fluid to treat central nervous infections. <coughs> the fifth generation drugs are effective against MRSA infections. <coughs> so what are the adverse reactions of this uh, cephalosporins? They are allergic reactions and nephrotoxicity. Uh, where are these cephalosporins used? They are used in gram-positive microorganisms and gram-negative microorganisms also. So you have to remember which generation drugs are given where and what are they. Um, and what are their uh, adverse reaction and uses. What are the adverse reactions here? Adverse reactions are allergic reactions. What are the uh, allergic reactions which can occur? They are skin rashes, urticaria, bronchospasm, and uh, anaphylactic reactions are very rare with cephalosporins, okay? Uh, next, we have nephrotoxicity. In nephrotoxicity, cephalothin, cephalothin may cause acute tubular necrosis. Cephalothin, when given in higher doses, it causes acute tubular necrosis. The toxicity is enhanced with other nephrotoxic agents like other antibiotics like uh, aminoglycosides and vancomycin. Next, we have cefopirazone, uh, which is not nephrotoxic, but when cephaloridin has, is given in higher doses, it causes nephrotoxicity and cephaloridin has the highest nephrotoxicity when compared to the 
other drugs of cephalosporins. Okay. What are the other side effects? I'm, I'm sorry, I have forgot. I forgot to mention other side effects here. So just remember the other side effects are pain uh, when on IM injection or IV injection. Okay, pain during IM injection, thrombophlebitis and IV injection, diarrhea, which may be common. And next we have bleeding. Bleeding that occurs due to uh, hypo, hypoprotombinemia, okay, which is treated by vitamin K. And next we have disulfiram like reaction for cefepirazole. Disulfiram reactions are nothing but uh, up, um, an alcoholic person, if takes this medicine when he consumes alpha, alcohol he may suffer with vomiting dizziness and all that is disulfiram like reaction so these are the few adverse effects of cephalosporins okay and uh, i hope you all understood penicillin cephalosporins and pharmacotherapy next coming to what are the nursing points you have to remember here okay uh, Nurses must be aware that 5% to 10% of patients who are allergic to penicillin will also exhibit sensitivity to cephalosporins. Okay, then you have after treatment starts, you have to assess signs and symptoms of correct infection, noting the location, characteristics, duration, and presence or absence of fever and pain. Is there any fever or pain? Any reduction is there or not? Okay, then evaluating appropriate laboratory findings. Assessment of uh, desired therapeutic effects, like uh, uh, is there any decrease of signs and symptoms of infection and fever? Then you continue to monitor uh, complete blood uh, report, hepatic and renal functions, urine analysis, uh, culture and sensitivity, peak drug drug levels. Okay, assess for uh, adverse rea uh, next uh, you assess for adverse reactions like you look for nausea vomiting abdominal cramping diarrhea drowsiness dizziness and photosensitivity if severe diarrhea is there when uh, containing mucus blood and pus yellow is uh, sclera or skin decreased urine output uh, darkening of urine you should be reporting immediately these are the few points which nursing nurses should remember when treating the patient with antibiotics i hope you all understood if you have any doubts comment comment in the below thank you students have a good day